In the aftermath of the Fatima apparitions, there have been numerous Marian apparitions, some hoaxes, others approved by the authorities in the church. Most of them have been largely forgotten, save for Our Lady of Akita, due to its dire and provocative warning. But another Marian apparition serves as a warning, especially if you are an American Catholic, and that apparition is largely an unknown apparition known to the few who know about it as Our Lady of America. The New Year seems like a good opportunity to talk about this approved apparition and the quiet warning that Our Lady brought to the United States in the late 1950s. So let's dive into this apparition today, because 2020 will be an important year that starts an important decade in the history of the United States and the history of the Western world. And a special thank you today to the patrons of this channel whose support made this video possible. What we will see is the message of Our Lady in this apparition, followed by the letter from now Cardinal Burke detailing the apparition's approval and promotion, followed by some historical context, which I believe points to it being a warning. The account of Our Lady of America's appearance goes like this. The Blessed Virgin Mary appeared to a young nun in the United States in several apparitions during the latter half of the 20th century. The nun's name was Sister Mary Ephraim. She was born in Brooklyn, New York on August 2, 1916. In 1929, she entered the Sisters of the Precious Blood at Rome City, Indiana. In 1959, she became a contemplative of the indwelling trinity in Fastoria, Ohio, an order that would later be suppressed, though as we'll go over here in a couple of minutes, that doesn't actually have anything to do with the apparitions themselves. Our Lady of America revealed her title, her image, and her messages to Sister Mildred, now it's her real name, and in 1956 gave her the most famous of all public messages that she bore for the people of the U.S. to hear. As the account goes, Sister Mary Ephraim, also known as Sis Sister Mildred, heard these messages until her death in her convent on January 10th, 2000, at the age of 83. The Message of 1956 My child, I entrust you with this message that you must make known to my children in America. I wish it to be the country dedicated to my purity. The wonders I will work will be the wonders of the soul. They must have faith and believe firmly in my love for them. I desire that they be the children of my pure heart. I desire, through my children in America, to further the cause of faith and purity among peoples and nations. Let them come with confidence and simplicity, and I, their mother, will teach them to become pure, like to my heart, that their own hearts may be more pleasing to the heart of my son. Sister Mary Ephraim said that Our Lady called herself Our Lady of America, in response to the love and desire that reached out for this special title in the hearts of her children in the United States. She entrusted Sister uh, Mary Ephraim, as she said, with this message that you must make known to my children in America, to further the cause of faith and purity among people and nations, especially through its youth. According to Sister Mary Ephraim, Our Lady revealed that the youth of America are called by God, to be the leaders of this movement of renewal on the face of the earth, and that they must be prepared for it by instilling in them the knowledge and study of what Our Lady called the Divine Indwelling, so that the Divine Presence becomes an intimate and necessary part of their life and daily living. Those who are willing wholeheartedly to follow her in her great battle against evil will bear the special title of Torchbearers of the Queen, bearing the torch of divine love that will conquer hate. In a moment, I'll let Cardinal Burke explain this apparition in his own words, and I hope that will provide some clarity as to what is meant by the divine indwelling. This apparition is, though, rather obviously tied to the apparition from Amsterdam known as Our Lady of All Nations, a controversial approved apparition that is also largely unheard of. Part of the reason that apparition isn't widely promoted is due to the request made at that time for the declaration of the Fifth Marian Dogma which includes a formal definition of Mary's co-redemptrix. I'll cover that apparition in the near future. That all having been said, though, here is the full text of the letter written by then-Archbishop Raymond Burke, addressed to the USCCB, describing the history and approval of the apparition of Our Lady of America. May 31st, 2007. Feast of the Visitation of the Blessed Virgin Mary. To the bishops of the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops. Regarding Our Lady of America. Dear Brothers in Christ, During the November meeting of our Conference of Bishops, you may have had occasion to view the statue of Our Lady of America, which was displayed in one of the meeting rooms, and to receive one of the Our Lady of America prayer cards or other information about Our Lady of America, which was available thanks to the devout lay faithful who made the arrangements for the display of the statue. The faithful involved in the promotion of the devotion to Our Lady of America have asked me, some months ago, 
to review the history and present state of the devotion to Our Lady of America, in what pertains to its canonical status. Finally, I am able to give them a report of the results of my study, which I want also to communicate to you. The devotion to Our Lady of America has its source in private revelations to Sister Mary Ephraim, baptized Mildred Newzel, who was born in 1916, and was professed in 1933 in the Congregation of the Sisters of the Most Precious Blood of Jesus, which has its general lot in Dayton, Ohio. She later became part of the contemplative branch of the same congregation. The contemplative branch was located at Our Lady of the Nativity Convent in New Regal, Ohio. After the suppression of the contemplative branch in 1979, the sisters who were members took up residence in Seneca County, Ohio. From the time of the suppression, Sister Mary Ephraim used her baptismal name, Sister Mary Mildred Newzel. Sister Mary Ephraim, Mary Mildred, died in 2000. One of the sisters survives and continues to live in Seneca County, Ohio. Having viewed, reviewed the correspondence between Sister Mary Ephraim and her spiritual director of many years, Monsignor Paul F. Leibold, Vicar General of the Archdiocese of Cincinnati, who later became the Bishop of Evansville and then Archbishop of Cincinnati, it is clear that the devotion, as proposed by Sister Mary Ephraim, received his approbation. In addition to the correspondence by which Monsignor Leibold declared the approval of the devotion, he also carried out the first of Our Lady of America's requests, made through Sister Mary Ephraim. Namely, he had a medal struck with the image of Our Lady of America on one side and the coat of arms of the Christian family on the other. The coat of arms symbolically represents the substance of the private revelation received by Sister Mary Ephraim. Namely, the indwelling of the Holy Trinity in the Christian home which is the source of life and unity in the family. The coat of arms points to the purity and selflessness of the love in the family because of the indwelling of the Holy Trinity, the model of which is the Mother of God under her title of the Immaculate Conception, Patroness of Our Nation. In a particular way, Our Lady of America expressed her desire that the United States of America, through her intercession, be devoted to the purity of love. She identified herself to Sister Mary Ephraim as our Lady of America, the Immaculate Virgin. In the consecration of our nation to Our Blessed Mother, made in 1959 at the National Shrine and renewed in our name by Bishop David Ricken on November 11, 2006, the Saturday before the November meeting of our Conference of Bishops, Our Blessed Mother is dressed as Immaculate Virgin. The contents of the private revelation received by Sister Mary Ephraim were published in a booklet, first in 1960, and again in 1971. Both of these editions were published with the imprimatur of Archbishop Leibold. A final edition, with some new contents, was published in 1989. The new contents were added at the direction of Father Edmund Mormon, SVD, the last chaplain of Our Lady of the Nativity Convent at New Regal. Father Mormon was sadly killed in an automobile accident on February 17, 1986. As Archbishop of Cincinnati, Archbishop Leibold commissioned a wooden plaque with the image of Our Lady of America, which he gave to the cloister at New Regal, at which it was displayed for many years in a public area. He had the wooden plaque created for the specific purpose of its use in the processions at the New Regal Convent. Archbishop Leibold also authorized the Weberding Wood Carving Shop at Batesville, Indiana, to carve a statue of Our Lady of America. The statue was carved for Our Lady of the Nativity Convent at New Regal, Ohio, at which public devotions to Our Lady of America were regularly celebrated. Other bishops have permitted the public display of a statue of Our Lady of America for devotion. For instance, the late Bishop William G. Connor of Greensburg permitted a statue to be displayed at the Carmel of the Assumption at Latrobe, Pennsylvania. Also, a statue of Our Lady of America was carried in procession in the Basilica of the National Shrine of the Immaculate Conception in Washington, D.C., on several occasions by the Apostolatus Unity and other groups. On May 31, 2006, a statue of Our Lady of America was enthroned at the Shrine of the Most Blessed Sacrament in Our Lady of the Angels Monastery in Hansville, Alabama, by the Franciscan Friars of the Immaculate. The statue was enthroned at Hansville as the very same statue which Bishop Conner authorized for public devotion at Latrobe. A specific request of Our Lady of America was that her statue be placed in the Basilica of the National Shrine of the Immaculate Conception. 
There is a a providential connection between Sister Mary Ephraim and the late Bishop John Francis Knoll of the Diocese of Fort Wayne, who was celebrated as the Apostle of the National Shrine. The principal apparitions of Our Lady of America to Sister Mary Ephraim took place in the chapel of the Precious Blood Sisters Convent in in Neep Springs Sanatorium near Rome City, Indiana. Archbishop Knoll, who died in 1956, maintained a summer residence at the sanatorium, within a few hundred feet of the place of the apparitions. While the National Shrine is the largest shrine in the world at which there was not a previous apparition, the private revelation to Sister Mary Ephraim very much confirms the mission of the National Shrine. The prayer attached to the devotion also received the imprimatur of the then Monsignor Leibold, Vicar General of the Archdiocese of Cincinnati. Archbishop Leibold was Sister Mary Ephraim's spiritual director from the time that he was Vicar General of the Archdiocese of Cincinnati until he died in 1972. Archbishop Leibold was always clear that the approved devotion had its origin in private revelation received by Sister Mary Ephraim over many years. What can be concluded canonically is that the devotion was both approved by Archbishop Leibold, and what is more, was actively promoted by him. In addition, over the years, other bishops have approved the devotion and have participated in public devotion to the Mother of God, under the title of Our Lady of America. Although the devotion to Our Lady of America has remained constant over the years, in recent years the devotion has spread very much and has been embraced by many with special fervor. Seemingly, as has been suggested by Father Peter Damien Mary Fellner, F.I., in his homily of August 5, 2006, at the Shrine of the Most Blessed Sacrament in Hansville, the moral crisis of our time, which demands a new teaching and living of the virtue of purity, has found an especially fitting response of loving care from the Mother of God in her message to Sister Mary Ephraim. Some have raised with me the canonical question regarding the status of Our Lady of the Nativity Convent in Seneca County, Ohio, which has been the residence of any remaining member of the suppressed contemplative branch of the Congregation of Sisters of the Most Precious Blood of Jesus. In response, I observe that the canonical question has no bearing on the devotion or its approbation. As one deeply devoted to fostering the devotion to Our Lady of Guadalupe in our nation, I have wondered about the relationship of the devotion to Our Lady of America to the devotion to Our Lady of Guadalupe. Archbishop Leibold, in fact, raised the question with Sister Mary Ephraim. Sister Mary Ephraim responded that Our Lady of Guadalupe is Empress of all the Americas, whereas Our Lady of America, the Immaculate Virgin, is the patroness of our nation, the United States of America. The two devotions are, in fact, completely harmonious. As our late and most beloved Pope John Paul II reminded us, Our Lady of Guadalupe, Mother of America and star of the new evangelization, draws all the nations of America into unity in carrying out the new evangelization. Our Lady of America calls the people of our nation to the new evangelization through a renewed dedication to purity and love. I hope that the above may be of some help to you in responding to questions regarding the devotion to Our Lady of America. May the Immaculate Virgin intercede for the intentions of our dioceses, and our nation. With fraternal gratitude and esteem, I remain, yours devotedly in Christ. Signed, Most Reverend Raymond Leo Burke, Archbishop of St. Louis. There you have it. Then Archbishop Burke goes to great lengths to show that the apparition was formally approved and promoted by the local ordinary, while reemphasizing the need for the United States to embrace and promote purity and love. What does this mean? The focus is, as it should be, on the family, the cornerstone of society. The Church and her rich history of social teaching tells us that the family is the central building block of society. Not the state, not the market, not industry, not the individual, but the family. And Our Lady seems to have reaffirmed this, rather curiously, in the late 1950s. Why at that time? Let's finish this video with some historical context, because Marian apparitions are never the subject of chance or coincidence. The 1950s are, according to the American imagination, a mythological time where American society was at the apex of its virtue and decency, both due to the beginning to confront racial injustices in the society as well as Hollywood not promoting overt degeneracy, while the society was much more pro-family and overtly Christian. Well, the reality is obviously more complicated than that, with the 1950s being a quietly decadent period that set up the absolute catastrophe of the 1960s and beyond. It was at this time, in the 1950s, that birth control was being researched and pushed by social revolutionaries and population control advocates. In the early 1950s, philanthropist Catherine McCormick had provided funding for biologist Gregory Pincus to research and develop the birth control pill, which was approved by the Food and Drug Administration in 1960. If you're paying attention, the 1960 is a key year in the Fatima message. 
but let's continue. The pill obviously became very popular and utterly transformed society, opening the door for both the sexual revolution and the mainstreaming of feminism. New forms of invasive contraception were introduced in the 1960s as well. At the same time, in 1953, Playboy magazine launched, and within a few short years, had inspired competitors who would push the envelope far beyond what founder Hugh Hefner was inclined to do. Culturally, this was a coup, as Hefner managed to market softcore smut as the entertainment of gentlemen. Following him would be the likes of Larry Flint and Al Goldstein, all of whom would work towards a mainstreaming of smut that would take hold beginning in the 1980s, leading to where we are today with that garbage so mainstream that to speak against it, it makes you out to be some sort of lunatic tyrant. This was aided by the court case in 1965, Griswold v. Connecticut, that declared it was unconstitutional for the government to prohibit married couples from using birth control, which was quickly followed by activists pushing for the full liberalization of contraceptives. I hope I don't have to explain the direct linkage between contraception and pornography. The next decades are a blur of mainstream pornography, no-fault divorce, adultery, declining birth rates, the spread of smut into mainstream Hollywood, and the spreading of the James Martin agenda that we see today. The U.S. is clearly at the center of this movement, as the main culture exporter in the Western world. The United States spreads its entertainment culture far and wide around the globe. But it's not only Hollywood and smut. The U.S. government, specifically the executive branch, under presidencies of either party, including today, promotes the James Martin agenda against developing countries. Why? Who knows, but the U.S. is the world's chief exporter of degeneracy, and Our Lady came to warn us of this right when it was getting started. Remember, the message of Fatima, more souls go to hell because of sins of the flesh than for any other reason. Sins of the flesh aren't the worst sins. There are a category of sins that cry out to heaven for vengeance, and only one of them is a sin of the flesh. But they are the most frequent, and in our depraved age, those sins are celebrated. Our Lady came bearing a message for the young people to be champions of purity and family life, of love centered in the family, right at the moment when the sexual revolution was being planned. Did Americans listen? No, at least not yet. But it isn't too late. Clearly, Our Lady came with a warning from heaven about what was coming, and to our ears it almost sounds quaint, because we've been living in the clown world created at that time by social revolutionaries. But purity and family love can be promoted and defended, and the promotion of the message of Our Lady of America is but one powerful means to do so. Let me know what you think about this. Why was this not spread further? It's clear that Archbishop Leibold tried to spread it, but with limited success. Anyway, I'm interested in seeing your thoughts in the description below or in an email if you're hearing this on an audio-only platform like Spotify or Apple Podcasts. Thanks for listening. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.